Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math questions out of this book here the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number. Well, actually, technically, that's not true. It's the problem that I'm about to solve is something that is very similar to what you will find on page number 227. Today is our lesson number 102. 102. And the actual problem that I'm going to solve is something that you will find in the older edition of the book. Right here, the book that I'm holding in my hand, it says Practicing to Take the GRE, General Test, the 10th edition. This is an excellent source for you to get your hands on some additional material if you want to practice some more for the GRE, particularly the quantitative comparison questions, the multiple choice questions, the graph questions. They have not changed. They are still the same questions, same type of questions that appear on the, on the new exam. They have added two or three other types of questions in the, in the, in, in the new exam. But the other, the old, <coughs> the, the, <coughs> but the three older types of questions have not changed. They are still there. The quantitative comparison questions are there. A lot of people have trouble with those. The, the regular multiple choice questions where you know, there is only one right answer, those are still there. And the graph questions are still there, as I said, right here in this book. This book contains, this book contains seven exams. Each exam has two sections, and each section has 15 quantitative comparison questions. Altogether, 210 questions. And if you're looking for solutions to those 210 uh, 10 quantitative comparison questions, you will find solution to every single one of these problems or quantitative comparison questions from this book on my channel. So look for it. Look for 10th edition. The problem that I'm going to do is, as I said, it appeared in this book. It appeared on, on, book, on page number D44, page 207. So if you want to watch the older video that I taped a long time ago, just type in GRE Math Day 44, page 207. Enough of the talk, let's, let's, let's start. Here's the question. The question is on the blackboard right here. We are asked to compare, we are asked to compare the sum of the roots of this equation. Right here, I'm going to reproduce here. x squared plus x minus 380 equals 0, we are told. We are asked to compare the sum of the roots of this equation versus 0, a big fat 0. How do we go about it? Well, we, there are two ways we can go about it. One is to use, one is to employ what is known as the quadratic formula. Another method is to use what is known as factorization. We're going to use here factorization method. In the factorization method, what we do is we look for two numbers. We are looking for we are looking for two numbers which add up to the coefficient of the middle term. The coefficient of the middle term here is one. The coefficient of this guy is just one. So they have to add up to one. And when we multiply them, their product has to equal to the coefficient of this guy, which is one, times the, this constant, and whose product is. 1 times negative 380 or simply negative 380. That's the tricky part. Can you think of two such numbers? Can you think of two such numbers that uh, add up to just 1 and their product happens to be a negative 380? Well, the fact, the fact that their, their product is negative and uh, they add up to just one should tell you that one of them has to be positive other one has to be negative what I want you to do now is to pause the video and think think of two such numbers two such numbers that add up to one and their product is 380 I'm going to give you a few seconds to pause and unpause the video if you like so 
So what do we do? How do we go about finding two such numbers? Well, it's very simple, very straightforward. What we do is, let me put this equation a little bit to the side here so I have the room here to work on. x squared minus plus x rather minus 380 equals 0 we are told. What we do is we take our 380. Now listen, it's 380 and if you try to find the factors of 380, try to break up 380s into parts, it will take you forever and ever, forever and ever. The simpler and easier thing to do is to break up 380. Break it up. Break up 380 into 38, 38 and 10. And now let's find the factors of 38. Divide it by 2. That's what you do. You divide by the smallest possible number, which is why we didn't want to start, with, which is why we didn't want to deal with 380 the way it was, because to, if you were to divide 380 by 2, you're going to have to go several rounds before the story ends. This way we just concentrate on this part, that's just 10. We'll worry about that at the end, okay? Let's keep it in abeyance. Let's divide. How many, how many twos in a, how many twos in a 3? How many twos in a 3? Three? 3 has 1 2. The remaining 1 from the 3 goes and joins this guy, becomes 18. How many 2's in 18? There are 9 of them. That's it, we're done. So it's 9 times 2. How is that going to help us? 9 times 2 equals 38. How is that going to help us? Well, here's how it's going to help us. There is, our, there is our answer. 2 times 10, 2 times 10 equals 20 and 19. Somehow we have to show, make sure they add up to 1, which is very simple. There are only two possibilities. There are only two possibilities. Either this guy is left like this, either 20 is positive and 19 is negative, or oh, this is the only possibility. There are no two, there are two possibilities. This is the only possibility. Because if you were to do this, negative 20 and a positive 19, that's not going to add up to 1. I was, I was being silly. That's going to add up to negative 1. So this is, this is not possible. That's it, we're done. That's, that, those are our factors. Positive 20 and a negative 19. That's how we're going to break it up. And if you were to multiply them, 19 times 2 is 38. As we, know, as we see here, 19 times 2 is 38. Times 10 is going to give us our 380. And we're going to have a negative 380 because it's positive 20 times negative 19. It's going to give us negative 380, which is what we were looking for. We were looking for two numbers, two numbers, which add up to 1, which they do here, positive 20 and a negative 19 add up to 1, and their product, as we just discussed, is 300, negative 380. That's it. So this middle term here, a positive x here, we're going to have to break it up into positive 20 and a negative 19. So it becomes x squared plus 20x minus 19x, as you can see, plus 20x and a minus, minus 19x, a positive 20x and a negative 19x add up to simple positive x, which is our middle term here. Minus 380 equals 0. I need the room, so I need to raise all of this now. I need the room. Equals 0. Now, we, we look at these two terms here, this term and this term. Is there anything common between these two terms? I see an x squared, I see 20x common factor that they have there is x. We're going to take it out. We're going to take out x as common. When we take out x common, what is left here? x squared divided by x is just x. You see, x times x is going to give us our x squared. Out of the 20x, we took out the x, so we are left with 20. Again, x times 20 is going to give us our 20x back that we started out with. Now we concentrate on these two. Now we go to the next two terms. Right here, this guy right here, negative 19x and a negative 380. Is there anything common in those two terms? And of course the answer is yes, 19 is the common factor because we just saw it, 38 is made up of 19 times 2. So we're going to take out negative 19 as a common factor. Negative 19 is a common factor and if you take out negative 19 from negative 19x, we are left with just x. Again, negative 19 times x is going to give us negative 19x which is white right here. And if you take out negative 19, what we're left here is a positive 20. A positive 20 times a negative 19 
positive 20 right here positive 20 times the negative 19 gives us the negative 380 right here positive 20 times the negative 19 gives us the negative 380 that we have here it works so that that part is done now we ask ourselves what is common between this part right here and the second part right here is there anything common yes what is common is what we see in the parentheses this is the common factor right here this is the common factor x plus 20 x plus 20 we're going to take it out common so we're looking at this 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 part right here and we're going to look at this part this right here and we're going to take out x plus 20 common we're going to take it out x plus 20 and once we take out x plus 20 common what we're left from this part is just an x what we're left from this part is a negative 19 and we are told that this quantity equals 0 this quantity therefore equals 0 so now we have two quantities such that their product is 0 which implies that either either x plus 20 must equal to 0 or I shouldn't say must equal to 0 I just said either either x plus 20 equals 0 or well, I, was, I have to erase this word here abeyance a little while ago when I, was, when I broke up 380 into 10 and 38 I said let's leave the 10 in abeyance what does it mean to leave something in abeyance it simply means to leave it aside that's what I will deal with it later I don't, want, I don't want to have to deal with the headache of 10 right now let's put it aside for the time being I will deal with it later that's what it means to keep something in abeyance if you want to learn word if you want to learn the word properly and if you're interested in improving your vocabulary which is very necessary and if you're looking for a decent score in the English portion of the GRE or SAT or GMAT any of these exams here require require one to have a decent vocabulary and if you're interested in uh, working on your vocabulary you can watch my vocabulary videos on my channel abeyance is something that you will find on day number nine day nine just type in just type in vocabulary just type in my, my name and then vocabulary day nine and the video will pop up and you will learn this word abeyance along with some other words some other useful words that is so here either this quantity is equal to 0 x plus 20 is equal to 0 or the second quantity x minus 19 has to be 0 x minus 19 must equal 0 or they are both equal to 0 that's it because if you have one quantity times other quantity and their product is 0 one of them has to be 0 or they are both 0 it doesn't if x plus 20 is equal to 0 then it doesn't matter what x minus 19 equals to it makes no difference because any quantity any number times 0 is 0 similarly if x minus 19 is equal to 0 then it doesn't matter how much is x plus 20 regardless of what x plus 20 works out to be times 0 is going to be 0 so if that were the case if x plus 20 is equal to 0 then x must be negative 20 this is our root this is called the root the solution is called the root and if this is true then x must be positive 19 and this is our root so the roots of these equations are roots of these equations are we just found them are negative 20 and positive 19 those are the roots here they are looking for the sum of the roots what will be the sum of the roots a negative 20 and a positive 19 add up to what the sum of the roots here would be negative 20 and positive 19 add up to negative 1 how does negative 1 compare to 0 well 0 is bigger therefore the answer is B voila answer to this problem is B it's a very complicated problem this, this will not appear on the exam as the easy questions this will appear as the hard questions this is not meant for everybody this is meant for people who are shooting for scores of 650 and above if your score is below that most likely you will not see a question of this difficulty in your exam and the reason I say that is because in the new format of the exam 
that they started giving from the last summer, from the last August, is computer adaptive. It adapts based on your skill. So the harder the problem that you can handle, the harder the next question is going to be. And this is this is going to appear for uh, as I said for, for for those people who are going to get scores of 650 or above, close to 700, maybe even more. This is not meant for everybody. But it does not hurt to actually do it just for learning purposes, because that's how you improve your skill, which is why we take our time. Of course, in the real exam, you don't have 20 minutes to solve a problem. We're just learning. That's all. That's it. We are done with this thing. Okay. I hope that uh, all of this thing does not confuse you too much. It's too crowded here, but anyway. That's it. We are done. I'm going to do this a uh, similar question one more time tomorrow, the last one, which is which is the problem that you see. I'm going to actually do something with it. A problem that you see on page number 226. The equation that they give you there. We're going to do something with it. We're going to create a new problem with it, something similar to this one, and we're going to redo it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.